Hi Big Tractor Power fans, this video comes to you from the Mammoth Cave area of Kentucky where a Sperry New Holland 1880 crop cruiser self-propelled forge harvester is chopping corn with a pair of international harvester tractors, a model 966 and 806 pulling modified dump truck trailers hauling the corn silage away to a Trent silo. This is what big time forge harvesting would have looked like about a half century ago from 1968 through 1975. In this video, we're gonna take a look at the Crop Cruiser's production history, specifications, and original price tag. But first, let's head out to the field so you can see and hear all the harvesting action. Sperry New Holland manufactured the 1880 Crop Cruiser from 1968 through 1975 at its factory in New Holland, Pennsylvania. This self-propelled forge harvester is based around the popular 880 pull-type forge harvester and was the direct replacement for the original New Holland self-propelled forge harvester introduced in 1961, the model SP-818. The SP-818 was one of the earliest self-propelled forge harvesters on the market. It was powered by a Chevrolet truck engine, a 453 V8 diesel rated at 130 horsepower, and the SP-818 could harvest about 60 tons of silage an hour. In 1968, when the 1880 Crop Cruiser replaced the original SP-818 self-propelled forge harvester, production grew from 60 tons an hour to 90 tons an hour. Sperry New Holland offered two different V8 engine options for the 1880 Crop Cruiser, a diesel and a gasoline version. The diesel model was powered by a Caterpillar 3160 636 cubic inch engine rated at 207 horsepower. In the last year of production of the 1880, the 3160 was replaced by the Caterpillar 3208 engine. The gasoline-powered 1880 Crop Cruiser was equipped 
with a Ford V8 391 cubic inch engine rated at 190 horsepower. From the factory, the diesel powered 1880 crop cruiser weighed in at 7,650 pounds and the gasoline version weighed 7,050 pounds. This self-propelled Ford Harvester, whether it was diesel or gasoline, was equipped with a 57-gallon fuel tank. Customers could order the 1880 Crop Cruiser with a 6 or a 9-knife cutter head. The 9-knife model was an additional $158. The 1880 Crop Cruiser was available with two different transmissions, a conventional very drive or a hydrostatic drive. The 1880 chopping corn in this video features that hydrostatic transmission, which allows it to move from zero to 18 miles per hour with the advance of a lever and to move in reverse with a pullback on that lever. This was very handy for covering a lot of acres in a day. When it came to equipping the model 1880 crop cruiser to harvest corn or hay, there were a variety of headers available. There was a standard two row model R2 corn head that was equipped to harvest rows of corn spaced from 34 to 42 inches and there was also an N2 narrow row two row corn attachment available to harvest rows of corn spaced at 26 to 32 inches. That two row header came with a price tag of $1,983. The 1880 crop cruiser that you see harvesting corn in this video is equipped with an N3 narrow three row corn head capable of harvesting corn planted on rows spaced from 26 to 32 inches. The original price tag of the N3 corn head was $3,098. Customers harvesting windrowed alfalfa or hay could also order a super sweet pickup attachment with 104 tines or a direct cut 7 foot or 12 foot haybine style header for harvesting standing crops such as sorghum, sudan grass, and oats. When the 1880 Crop Cruiser was introduced in 1968, it became the first New Holland self-propelled forge harvester to offer the option of an enclosed cab. This fully ventilated cab was manufactured by Egging for Sperry New Holland and was a factory installed option for about $795. The 1880 Crop Cruiser that you're watching chop corn in this video was manufactured in 1974 and it would have been considered a deluxe model. It has all the bells and whistles. It's powered by the Caterpillar 3160 V8 diesel engine rated at 207 horsepower. It features the hydrostatic transmission and this power unit would have been priced at $24,337. It features the factory installed egging cab for $795. It has the nine knife cutter bar options for $158 and it's also equipped with the N3 three-row corn head for $3,098 for a grand total in 1974 of $28,388. There are two international harvester tractors working alongside the Sperry New Holland 1880 crop cruiser hauling the corn silage away. The first is a 1968 Farmall 806 tractor rated at 94 PTO horsepower and the second is a 1974-966 tractor rated at 95 PTO horsepower. These two tractors are pulling modified dump truck trailers where the cab and engine were cut off the frame and then it was reutilized with a dump box to be pulled behind the tractor. These two tractors are hauling away about 20 loads of corn silage per day. Once the dump trailers are completely filled with corn silage, the tractors haul them from the field to a trench silo. The tractor backs the trailer in and unloads the corn silage and then a 165 horsepower Caterpillar D6H bulldozer takes over and pushes the silage into the trench and then compacts it to help it ferment to become a healthy feed for the beef cattle on this farm.
this way, son. Go this way, hard. Come on. Come on. Come on. That's good, right there. Go. I hope you've enjoyed learning about and spending time out in the field with this Sperry New Holland 1880 crop cruiser. This is the way big time forge harvesting would have looked a half century ago. 50 years ago, if you were running a 207 horsepower, three row cell propelled forge harvester with two 90 plus horsepower row crop tractors, you definitely would have been labeled as a big time operator. In the modern era of forge harvesting where top end self propelled machines are running from 900 to 1000 horsepower and capable of harvesting 12 to 14 rows of corn at a time, it's really exciting to be able to share with you what a classic corn chopping setup looked like years ago. I greatly appreciate the farmer for sharing this great looking harvesting operation and for keeping up all of this equipment in excellent looking condition to preserve its history. If you'd like to see more videos like this one, consider subscribing to Big Tractor Power YouTube where there are over 1,000 videos of farm machines in action. Make sure to click on the notifications bell as well so you'll know when the next Big Tractor Power 
our video is released. New videos are coming out almost every day from the channel. If you have any questions or thoughts about this video, please leave them in the comment section below as I try to respond to every post that is made. If you would like to get a preview of what is coming up next on Big Tractor Power YouTube, make sure to check out Big Tractor Power Instagram where I share pictures and short video clips of what is currently being filmed in the field. As always, thank you for watching.